Hello YouTube, welcome back. Uh, my voice is a bit funny today because we have a stinking cold, so I do apologise for that. So this week we're going to be starting the creation of a scythe. And we're going to be using, as an example, this scythe, which has been sat in the forge for the best part of 80 years. And this has been modified, the, the tang has been cut off, and a new one being scarf welded on. Uh, normally it, the tang would come out at a right angle and be straight with a knobble on the end in order to hold it fixed to the handle. Now this one's been modified so that it can be towed behind a work boat uh, to keep the pond weed down. Now the cutting, from, viewed from the top, the cutting edge is flat with a slight chamfer towards the end and the chamfer is caused by this square section here which is there to put a bit of rigidity into the blade. So we'll have to forge that in. Now on this particular example it has been buggered about a bit because somebody's gone along with an angle grinder to sharpen it rather than actually peening it on a peening anvil like the one that we made last week. So I might be able to rescue it at some point. I don't think there's much call for a weed cutting scythe these days to be towed behind a boat. But anyway we're going to be making ours from 35mm round bar. And I'm also going to be using the power hammer uh, because I haven't got two or three days to create it. Uh, and we're going to be using drawing dies, which are basically pieces of handrail. Uh, and these will draw out the material quicker than using the flat of the hammer. So I heat up the stock and off we go. Now you can do this by hand if you want. Uh, like I said, I don't actually have the time to do it by hand, uh, and it's too interesting a project to not make, so power hammer it is. So I'll rough out the stock first. Ultimately I want it to be 12, 12 mil by 40 mil in size. So having roughed it out, I'm going to use a stop, which is the thing you can see me holding on the left here and that will literally stop the power hammer at the correct thickness. So if you have 12 by 40 stock lying around, use that by all means, it'll save you having to draw out the 35mm uh, round bar. Uh, I find that if I only need a short section of something, it works out better for me to draw out some bigger stock in this manner rather than actually having money tied up in steel stock that I'm not going to use that often. So once you've got the right stock size, give it a bit of a straighten. And because it's quite long now, I'm going to use a helper to keep it in the fire. So with the stock size done, I'm going to stick a point on the end of it. So again, most of you guys know how to stick a taper on the end of something. And I will then actually draw a taper back towards the center of the bar. So as you can see here, I'm extending the reach of the taper a little bit every time, but the thinner section is getting worked more than the wider section, if that makes sense. And don't forget to keep dressing the thickness. So at this stage we have a nice curved blank, and we're going to start forging out the cutting edge, which will be about 1.5 millimeters thick. Now what will happen when I do that is that it will straighten out this curve quite a lot. So in order to start this process I'm putting a fullering die on the power hammer and I will literally forge up to where that square section is on the outside of the blade. It's not particularly clear on the camera but 
I'm literally walking the fuller along that square section and then drawing out the edge from there. And I'm doing this in sections. Uh, you don't want to draw out too much of the blade in one section uh, because it won't max match up to the next section so you have to do it in stages. Now this has straightened out the blade quite a lot so I will then put the curve back into it. So here it is, quite rough, but getting there. So using a set hammer, uh, and you'd normally use this with a striker, but because I have an adjustable headstock on the power hammer, I can do it this way. I'll just square up the transition between that square section on the spine and the blade itself. You can see I've still got a lot of thickness in that blade. We'll draw that out afterwards. So with that squared up, I will put the drawing dies back on the power hammer and I will start releasing that material from the blade in order to draw out the edge quite a lot. And this will put more of a curve on the spine in the wrong direction, but we'll talk about that in a second. So we put that curve back in and you'll see that that warps the edge of the blade. Now that isn't actually an issue, uh, and this is an armour smithing technique uh, where you can put the curve in and then that warped bit that you can see me hammering on here you will actually upset that into itself so you're not taking the curve out. Now you have to do this at heat uh, but basically you're just upsetting the metal again. So. I'm not really contacting the anvil, uh, I'm just tapping on the hot metal. I hope that makes sense. So you can see the curb's still there, and I have a straight edge, sort of. So I'm going to work that section next. So again, get it hot. Put the curve in there. And upset the edge. So it does mean you have a bit more material in the edge. The edge is a bit thicker. But we'll go back to that afterwards and draw it out some more. So at this stage I will go to the cutting plate on the anvil and I'll just rest the spine of the scythe against it and go in with a small butcher and just square that up some more and it'll put a bit of an undercut underneath it which is fine. And square up again with the set hammer. At this stage I had to go a bit between the two uh, and I also decided that I would go with the gas forge for this last bit uh, which puts a longer heat on things which means I can do a bit more work in one stretch. So I will then turn the blade upside down and this is the top part of the blade we're working now so this will face upwards when the blade's in use. I'm just flattening the 
edge of the blade and with that square section on the spine that will put a nice upward curve to the spine of the blade. So basically creating that chamfered spine. And you can see the edge of the blade is already quite thin at this stage. It's looking quite good. The set hammer's doing a nice job of flattening it, but I don't actually mind fullering marks in this because it shows that it's handmade. At this stage we'll go back to the drawing dies and we'll just draw out that upset that we put into the edge when we put a curve back into the blade. We'll do this along the entire length. So using the vise I'll give it a bit of a straighten. Now this is still quite rough looking. We'll clean a lot of that roughness out in the next episode. So here's the blank mostly forged out. The spine's not quite straight. But what we'll do is we'll just cut off any bulges on the edge just to give us a straight cutting edge. So here is the finished blank. So we'll tidy this up a bit next week. Do something about the spine, create the tang. Dress the inside of the spine as well because I'm not overly happy with that at the moment. But otherwise, this is going quite well. So, considering it's the first one I've made. So, thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you enjoy these videos or feel that you're learning something from it, please consider donating on Patreon. Uh, other ways you can help is to like, comment and subscribe. This is my current list of Patreon donors. Thanks a lot, guys. Couldn't be doing this without you. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.